Get me that signal. We need more power. We've done a lot of work getting the audience to expect a showdown in the streets of Defiance and driving out the E-Rep, and we're not going there at all. This is much more about uh, the, world the world coming together because, uh, because of what's happening globally, and we're going to be tying um, the end game of the season. is going to tie into what the Votans did when they, first, uh, when they first arrived and how they planned on dealing with the human problem on planet Earth, which otherwise was a very idyllic uh, paradise weren't for all the people that already were on the planet. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a little jumping into the past, and that's something that um, there there's a rather in in season three, I want to actually do quite a lot in the past because that's something that we've talked about, and I, I always plan on doing it, and it always ends up falling out because we have to build new sets for it, or it ends up being that we only have it's it's a it's a real frustration only having 42 minutes. Because you, because there's so many characters and there's so much story that you want to have like that premium cable. An hour has 60 minutes instead of 42, because there's always like great things that end up not fitting into our seven-day schedule. Sure, uh, I planned uh, I planned Pottinger uh, to be dead, and I discovered that uh, Jim Murray has an infinite capacity to be likable and compelling, no matter what you have him do. Like he truly does, he does the worst, most toxic, horrible crap, and somehow you still kind of like him. And it's and it's that same that same special gift that uh, that uh, Jamie and Tony have as 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 actors. They're so compelling and they're so uh, engaging that no matter what they do, you still sort of love them. And that's that's one of the things that I've discovered is uh, is one of the charming things about the show is all of these characters really do bad things. Like even Nolan, he's he's our hero, but he, he honestly is the world's worst sheriff. It's like back in season one when. He strongly suspected that either Kenya or uh, Amanda had killed uh, Hunter Bell. He whitewashed the entire investigation because he didn't want to find them guilty. Uh, the same, th same thing this year is when he realized that Wraith may have been, or one of the miners may have been complicit in, um, in that death. He like wiped the Gulani, uh, uh, or the Gulanite dust off the, off the body and doctored evidence. And that's one of the things that's frustrating, for, you know, that's awful. But at the same time, you still like him because his heart's in the right place. Oh, pretty big, yeah. It's uh, and it's uh, it, it's quite a tour de force of uh, for uh, for Gary Hutzel and his VFX team. Uh, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really impressed with uh, what they managed to accomplish in our in our last two episodes. And it's kind of cool that um, because Dominion had fewer episodes, we're going to be airing new episodes in our regular time slot and the Dominion time slot for the last couple. And um, it's going to make the finale is going to be is going to run continuously, and it'll feel more like a two-hour event as opposed to two. And, and I think that's great because for, I always feel that 42 minutes, I'm I, I want a little more show. So I think the last the last couple, you're going to get a little more a little more show. I think uh, no pun intended. I was uh, that it was, I, I'd rather Daytac wasn't just black and white. You know, it's definitely a gray area with his. Um, obviously, the way he looks, but his personality as well. He's, you know, he's got different dimensions to to him, and, and in some ways, rather ironically, he is he, he is quite human in many ways. He feels he um, he feels deeply, but yeah, I think there's there's certainly a lot of challenging moments. Um, the beginning, the end of season two. There's some quite emotional, emotional moving moments that happened between Daytac and Stammer that were um, they were challenging, but they were challenging because they were they were interesting and they were uh, there was complexities that takes their relationship into a new area that um, that maybe they actually start behaving like a proper husband and wife um, without. Uh, without actually uh, murdering everybody who disagrees with them. Um, but uh, so, yeah, there was challenges, but challenges that, you know, one likes, to, one likes to have and likes to rise to, I guess. I think he's playing it now, you know, he's getting, he's getting a little smarter. You know, he, didn't, he wasn't with his wife for quite a while. And, uh, you know, in many ways, Stamma always did, was pulling the strings. 
backstage, as it were. And because she hasn't been around, he's sort of reverted back to the way he was before he met Stammer. He's still a blunt instrument, but he's a he's he's cunning, you know. He's smart, but um, but uh, but he's he's still very volatile as well. But you never know with this guy. You know? I think that's what makes him fun to play. Um, uh, is is the sort of uh, the unpredictability of him and uh, and you know the way he treats people. But um, I think if people can empathise with him, I think that's a you know the writers or what everybody's trying to create is a is a good thing. Because I mean, there's anti heroes like Jimmy Cagney and White Heat or Tony Montana. You, you, they're bad guys in some ways. Um, but there, but there's something about them that's likable and maybe human as well. Oh, Arissa, the <laughs> you will, you you'll find out a lot more as the season progresses. Um, I don't think it's kind of maybe how people expect. I think it's going to go in a slightly different direction, um, and I don't think people are gonna. Uh, well, already not many people are liking her at the moment. Let's just say that she's she's a she's a she's quite hardcore. She's um she's not an easy girl to live with. I do, you know, less at the moment because I was so bad at it. Um, but Grant uh, used to get us in his trailer and play it, and um, some exciting stuff actually happens this season with characters coming, uh, other characters going into the game, and also a competition was one that uh, one of the characters comes into the series, and she's she's a badass Serathian. I think I'm allowed to say that. But she's great. <laughs> we don't work well together, as you yeah. can tell. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. The games. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. The challenging scene. Uh, without giving too much away, in episode 11, I think we spoke about it at the panel. There's a, a scene between Grant and I, and when I think of it, I well up. That's how. <laughs> that's how hard it was. It was. Um, yeah, it was a pretty epic scene. I remember it just kind of everything came to a head with those two characters and um, playing it exhausted us for days um, and it was hard because we hadn't seen each other for a long time either and so there was all this stuff building up with these characters and then they threw us together and we were in this tent and and stuff happens and uh, yeah sparks fly and it was it was hard it was hard because it was also kind of heartbreaking for us to play that you know as father daughter and and he treats me like you know his daughter and and he's my father figure on set so it was kind of really hard i was like please don't arissa don't but um arissa does so yeah <laughs> um you know if i go back to season one i do talk about the johnny cash scene quite a lot and it was it was a fun scene and i just love the fact that you've got this alien i didn't even think about it until i watched it and it kind of made me smile because i was like there's this alien girl singing Johnny Cash in a jeep with with this human father, and and neither of them know what they're doing, but they will relate to each other through this song. And it was just a really nice moment, and we had so much fun with it. We'd barely known each other five minutes when we did it, and um, yeah, so it meant it, it it really holds kind of true to who they are deep down. I think. Oh yeah. Sometimes I make it up until ADR. Um, <laughs> no, I. David, who created the languages, he's been absolutely incredible. He's always there, no matter what time, he seems to always be there at the end of the phone for us to kind of ask him questions, suddenly go, how do you say this again? And they send it to us in sound bites, so you get to hear it almost like a song. It's much easier to learn. But I walk around my apartment in Toronto with my French bulldog looking at me, going, what the hell are you saying? Just kind of sing-songing the, the lines until they get in my head. Um, and some lines never go away and I still don't know what they mean but they're in there and uh, yeah it's funny it's it's but it's again another challenge which has been good fun. Um, oh, there's a sentence that I didn't get in my head for a long long time I don't know what it means it was from season one but I said it in season two randomly because I couldn't remember my line but it was Halida and it didn't get in my head for so long that I repeated it over and over that now it will never leave me. <laughs> and so I have to ask David what it means. <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and one of the, my favorite words is Tashinka because um, I feel I need a tattoo of that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you, good to see you.